Welcome to lecture on emergency and trauma. Objectives are to demonstrate primary and secondary patient assessment, establish priorities in trauma scenarios, initiate primary and secondary management, and arrange disposition of the patient. Now, trimodal death distribution of trauma. Trimodal death is very important to understand. So the first peak is instant death, brain, heart, large vessel injury. Second peak occurs from minutes to hours after the trauma. Third peak occurs day to weeks after the trauma. Emergency nursing focuses on second peaks, so deaths from traumatic brain injury, skull fractures, penetrating neck injuries, spinal cord injuries, things like cardiac tamponade, tension pneumothorax, pelvic fractures, liver laceration, splenic ruptures, bladder rupture. You get the point. Treating treat the greatest threat to life first. Do not wait for the diagnosis to start treatment. A detailed history of the trauma is not necessary to begin the care. Always start with ABCDE approach. Now, in initial assessment and management, effective trauma system needs a teamwork of emergency medical services. Roles, you should have a trauma captain, interventionist, nurses, and recorder. Primary survey, when the patients are attest, assessed and treated. Priorities established based on their injuries, vital surveys, and injury mechanisms. A, B, C, D, E. So A is for airway and C spine protection, B for breathing, C for circulation, and D for disability, E for exposure. How do we evaluate the airway? Airway should be assessed for potency. Is the patient able to talk, inspect for foreign bodies, examine for strider? Now assume there is a spinal injury in patients with multiple trauma unless otherwise proved. C-spine clearance can be both clinically or by x-rays. Spinal protection should remain in place until the patient can cooperate with the clinical exam. Airway interventions include oxygen, suction, chin lift, jaw thrust, oral or nasal airways. Establish a secure airway. Breathing. What can we look for to assess a patient's breathing status? Airway potency does not ensure adequate ventilation. So, look, listen and touch. Deviated trachea, see for any deviated trachea, palpate any crepitus, flail chest, sucking wounds or absence of breath sounds, chest x-ray if available to adequate lungs. So this is an example of simple pneumothorax. You can see where the arrows point, there's a massive demarcation line. And this is an example of hemothorax, I guess a blood in the thoracic cavity. Other breathing interventions, ventilate with 100% oxygen, needle decompression if tension is suspected, chest use for pneumothorax and hemothorax, occlusive dressing to suck chest wounds, and if intubated, evaluate the tube position. Circulation, rapid assessment of hemodynamic status, level of consciousness, skin color, pulses in arms and legs, and blood pressure. Shock should be considered on every trauma patient's types, hypovolemic, just low blood. Cardiogenic, heart is able to pump blood less than normal. Obstructive, physical obstruction reduces output. And distributive, distrib disruption to vasomotor tone. Hypovolemic, the physical loss of either blood due to hemorrhage or plasma due to burns. Patient will present with decreased blood pressure, increased heart rate, increasing anxiety, increasing respiratory rate, and decreased urine output. Hypovolemic shock interventions, monitor pulse and blood pressure continuously, apply pressure to the bleeding sites, establish IV excess, two large bore IVs, volume resuscitation, have blood and fluids ready if needed, Foley catheter to monitor the out. Tips include anti-cubital for IV, wrist next to the thumb, scalp, keep the catheter tight, it is all right to miss so do not worry. Right, cardiogenic shock, inadequate contractility of the heart due to MI, blunt trauma, dysrhythmia, cardiac failure. It's rare in trauma cases. Patient does not necessarily need fluids. Interventions, ECG as soon as possible. Cardiac monitor, treat the appropriate dysrhythmias. Obstructive shock, physical obstruction or compression of the heart or vessels around it. Can be cardiac tamponade, pneumothorax, or tension pneumothorax. Let's have a look at tension pneumothorax. So, how do you treat it? It's by chest drain. I guess this is an example of tension pneumothorax where the air gets trapped in that pleural cavity. Okay. 
Alright, so obstructive shock interventions remove the underlying obstruction. If there is a hemo or a pneumothorax chest tube, there's a cardiac tamponade, pericardiosynthesis or needle decompression. Distributive shock, loss of vessel tone due to sepsis or neurogenic shock. Okay, so septic shock and neurogenic shock come under the distributive shock. Patient will usually have dry warm skin, bradycardia. Interventions, if it's septic, you have to treat with antibiotics. If it's neurogenic, it's so disability, abbreviated neurological exam, level of consciousness, pupil size and reactivity, motor function, Glasgow comma scale, and it's utilized to determine severity of injury. So, okay, so disability. Now, Glasgow comma scale is very important. We have a separate video on Glasgow comma scale as well. So, Glasgow comma scale is measured from eye, verbal, and motor response, and each is graded in to different categories and each category got a number. So I can be spontaneous, verbal to pain or doesn't open the eyes and four, three, two, one. Similarly, verbal responses can be oriented, confused, inappropriate words, sounds or no, 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 no sound production. Five, four, three, two, one. And similarly, motor can be obeys the motor commands, localizes, flexion, decorticate, decerebrate or none. So the total GCS score is 15 and the minimum is 3. The reason being, I, verbal and motor all have the minimum score of 3. So, Alright, so interventions for disability. Spinal cord injury, keep the spine stable. High dose steroids may be used. Decreasing mental status may be a sign of elevated intracranial pressure. Sit the patient up and hyperventilation is increasing breathing and oxygen. Next is exposure, E for exposure. So completely disrobing of the patient. Log roll to inspect the back, rectal temperature. Warm blankets to prevent hypothermia. Always inspect the back. Well, let's, let's have a look at a scenario. 28 year old man is involved in a high speed motor vehicle accident not wearing a helmet he's groaning and utters my belly Ooh. heart rate 134 blood pressure 87 by 42 respirations 32 oxygen saturation 89 and 100 percent by mask patient is drowsy but arousable to voice has large bruise over the left side of his scalp airway is patent decreased breath sounds over the right chest abdominal pain to touch obvious left ankle deformity so what are the priorities what are the patient's possible injuries? What are the interventions that need to happen? Think about them. So always A, B, C, D, E first. A, we patent. Go to the mask, frequent reassessment, C, spine mobilization, then B, then C, then D, and then E. Okay? All right. Now, this is all under primary survey, but we have to do a secondary survey. Secondary survey is you start taking a history from the patient when the patient is stabilized. So ample history, allergic, medications, past medical history, last meal and events. Physical exam from head to toe. Frequent reassessment of vitals. Diagnostic studies have to be done at the same time. X-rays, fast exam. This is an example of seat belt sign obtained during trauma. Diagnostic aids, blood work, X-rays. CTs should only go to radiology if stable, otherwise you should use a portable X-ray machine. Must be monitored in X-ray. Widen media timeline. Think about what disease would, present, would produce this picture. Aortic dissection. Alright, so bilateral pubic rami fracture and SI joint disruption. What should this injury make you worry about? Answer, it's a massive internal bleeding. As we know, pelvic fractures and femur fractures can bleed a lot. All right, so abdominal trauma is a common source of traumatic injury. Mechanism is important. Bike accident, road traffic accident. High suspicion if the patient has tachycardia, hypotension and abdominal tenderness. Now, can be asymptomatic early on and ultrasound can be early screening too. All right, look for distension, tenderness, seat valve marks, penetrating trauma, retroperitoneal ecchymosis. 
which is a bruising on the flanks. Splenic injury is the most common injured organ in blunt trauma, often associated with other injuries. Left lower rib pain may be indicative, often can be managed non-operatively. Liver injury is the second most common solid organ injury, can be difficult to manage surgically, often associated with other abdominal injuries. Pregnant trauma patients are important. Pregnant trauma patients are at risk for premature labor, abruptio, uterine rupture. Intervention in these include if maybe hard to spot in unconscious or intubated patients, the patient's going to premature labor, they'll be masked as trauma-related back pain. Now, if the mother is stable, we can, can give medications to stop labor. If there's abruptio, monitor the fetal heart rate for at least 48 hours. If it's a uterine rupture, it may be associated with bladder rupture with blood or meconium in the urine. Rarely repairable, treat the mother for blood loss and possible trauma surgery. Pediatric trauma patients are very important as well. Five months and under, assume they are obligate nose breathers. Respiratory and heart rate differs by age. Can become hypoglycemic easily. Children can maintain a normal blood pressure for much longer than adults. So blood pressure is not a reliable indicator of shock. Disposition of trauma patients. It's dictated with the patient's condition and available resources. Serial examinations. Look for mental changes, abdominal exams for increased bruising or pain, and check the lungs for changes in air movement. All right, summary, trauma is best managed by a team approach. A thorough primary and secondary survey is key to identify life-threatening injuries. Once a life-threatening injury is discovered, intervention should not be delayed. Disposition is determined by the patient's condition as well as available resources. Many thanks to all of you for coming here and staying with us. Please do not forget to subscribe and share our videos. Leave a comment and like our videos. Thanks again for coming.